This year was definitely one of my favorite years, one of my most satisfying and one of my strongest years from a creative standpoint. And it really came as a surprise because it crept up on me and I wasn't expecting it. Uh, working with major sport organizations, being able to have my art in galleries and being able to be paid for that. Uh, being able to have opportunities with different brands or sponsorship, being able to have the opportunities to just cultivate a relationship with Fujifilm as a company, and being able to test out multiple cameras, have multiple experience with these lenses, manual focus, autofocus, getting back into videography, uh, being able to cultivate relationships when it comes to corporate and commercial work, which has opened up a whole new revenue stream. Things have turned out really well, and I'm very grateful for them. One of the things that actually came more as a surprise than anything is I dipped my toe back into the Leica well or back into the Leica pool, whatever in the world it's supposed to be. After owning a couple of their autofocus bodies before, like the Leica Q, uh, renting cameras on multiple occasions whenever I first moved here and was super bored and had nothing to do with no one, and just really trying to give myself an immersive feel of everything going on, mostly because I just wanted a rangefinder uh, style camera with an actual rangefinder patch to start recording and documenting day-to-day -day life and use it for work. And in the process, not only did I create some of my favorite art and some of my favorite photographs and be able to document some amazing times, whether it's uh, MLS playoff game, whether it's Fernando Tatis Jr. and his well-documented, cut short, come back to the San Diego Padres. Um, there's just so many things that went well for me. And in the process of using this camera, I realized that out of all the Leica digital M bodies they've ever created, they really struck gold in 2015. And since then, personally, and you may agree after watching this video, I don't think they've ever been able to reach this height with such an amazing, beautiful camera. You see, no matter what the M10 and what the M11 offer, there's one simple fact whenever it comes to, in my opinion, the Leica M digital bodies. They topped out and they made their best camera in 2015. And that camera was the Leica M Type 262. Today's video is sponsored by Aura. So have you ever been online trying to buy a camera just like this and the price is just too good to be true, but you can't pass up on it because what if it is true? So you start exchanging some information with someone online, you make a payment and everything, and then you get a notification from your bank and you just bought $8,000 worth of iTunes gift cards and foot cream. Something went wrong, didn't it? Now this may sound funny, this may sound silly, but it's actually not. In fact, not only is identity theft the fastest growing crime in the US, one person every 14 seconds falls victim to this. But this is how you can protect yourself. Aura is an all-in-one service designed to do one thing. It's designed to protect you, your family, your money, everything from the horrors of identity theft. Right now, you may be paying individually for a password vault and protector, for a VPN. You may even be paying for identity theft protection. Aura has that all in one and gives it to you in a simple, low price. Not only does Aura take care of all these things on the surface once you give access, it also immediately checks the dark web for your email, your passwords, and anything else associated with you so that you can take action and you can take the steps to be able to protect yourself and lock down your accounts. In my opinion, services like this are a must going forward in order to protect you, your family, and your money. In 2020 alone, people lost $56 billion due to identity theft. But luckily for you, Aura is giving everyone a 14 day free trial for anyone who goes to the link aura.com slash DRosa. That's aura.com slash DRosa so you can get your 14 day free trial and begin today protecting you and your family with Aura. I'm well aware that people are gonna say that I'm batshit crazy for saying the M-Type 262 is a better camera than the M10, the M11, and any of the iterations that have come forth since then, but it's something that I truly do believe because this camera right here, I believe, is the best, the absolute best in a digital standpoint of what a lot of Leica purists say Leica stands for and the experience that they're hoping to gain from using their cameras. Now, there's gonna be three major topics that people bring up in order to try to persuade you that I'm wrong and we're gonna go through them and I already know what they're gonna be. They're gonna bring up the sensor, better high ISO performance, 
and more megapixels. Of course, everyone loves the megapixel wars, but there's a reason or two why that may not be for you and why it may not matter to you. The second thing they're gonna bring up is Live View and how Live View changes everything for everyone. Even though it's always weird because Leica purists are always so upset anytime they see someone taking photos like this using the back screen, but it's okay whenever they're doing it on their Leica M240, their M10, their M11, whatever and what have you. We'll discuss that as well. And the final thing that people are gonna talk about is the build and how the M10 is smaller, which means it's lighter because it's thinner and the M11, the M10P and everything, the M10R, they're all better because they're thinner, they're smaller, they look more aesthetically pleasing and like the older Leica bodies like film cameras. And to that, I say you may have gained a thinner body, but you lost one of the most important things and one of the reasons why this camera kicks every M10's ass. So I have my notes here. Let me just run off a few things of why I believe this camera is better and why I believe Leica's changing the magic sauce they had on this camera in 2015. And the first thing may surprise you. You see, in this M-Type 262, there's something special about this top plate. You see, this isn't brass. This is aluminum. And what this was able to do was make this camera lighter and easier to carry. Now you may be saying, oh, that doesn't matter, that's cheap. But if Leica thought it was cheap, they wouldn't have gone with the same thing in one of their iterations Never it came to the M11. You see, now that it came out in the M11, a lot of people are praising the aluminum top of the camera, the aluminum top plate, and saying it's so smart. For street photographers, it's easier to carry, easier to have in your bag. It's just an ingenious move. But again, I wanna bring up that whenever it came out in 2015, this was kind of seen as blasphemous. It's not gonna be able to have the same brassing. It is aluminum and not brass, which means it must not be a, as good a build quality. All the things and propaganda that people were pushing out that didn't matter. But here's the thing. This camera has stood up to the test of time. It's had multiple users, including myself, who I am not gentle with my gear whatsoever, as seen by the bottom of the camera. And it's doing good. The paint isn't scratching off. And to be honest, the build quality is up to par with Leica. A Leica is a Leica. There's no way around it. But there's one thing that I have to say about it is it looks very damn good. And if it wasn't for someone telling you that this was an aluminum top on this body, you'd have no way of knowing. Now, would you believe that this thing is actually lighter than your Leica M10 or your M11, any of those iterations, whenever they have a brass top? Yeah, this is 600 grams, I believe is what it is. 600 grams compared to the 633 or 622 grams in a Leica M10. Yeah, this is lighter. It's a bigger body and it's lighter. The rangefinder patch is fantastic. It's bright and it's a rangefinder patch. There's nothing to argue about. Listen, I know people talk about how there's been improvements to the rangefinder patch and they're brighter. I've had no issues with bright light, backlight, or low light anytime when shooting this camera. And so I can't miss something that I've already had or hadn't had. And I can't miss something that I don't really need because this right here has never failed me in any of those situations. So I can't even think of a time or a place where I would wish I had the brighter or better visible frame lines or viewfinder or patch from the M10 or from an M11. Again, the build on this is still fantastic. The tactile buttons are amazing, but there's one thing in this camera that is built in that I believe is just something that they should have kept with the M10. I don't believe it's on the M11. You see, you have an amazing shutter up top right here and I'll let you hear the sound. Very nice, very pleasing. It's a nice slap. I don't know why, it just reminds me of like a news reporter slap. It's fantastic. But did you know on this Leica, if you take a photo and then after actuating, you half release, you can actually view. Full release, turns it off. Now that's amazing for a couple of reasons. Number one, I no longer have to press a blade button and have to have the back screen on longer than I want, which is gonna help with battery life. And number two, it's nice because on Leicas with the screen always being off, I can just take the photo, half release, and I'm good to go. And that half release and not really having to press anything is one of the reasons why I think this is the best mix whenever it comes to Leica digital and film and really what Leica was going for with the M bodies. You see, there is one thing that is missing from this camera that you already noticed I said it doesn't have and I haven't even mentioned, and that's live view. You see the M240 starting there and then going up, there's a little button right here for people to be able to live view and look through the back LCD what they're shooting and to be able to use focus peaking to actually grab focus. Now, that may be fantastic and a lot of people may love that, but at the same time, there are a lot of Leica users who actually say fooey to that and don't appreciate that part in other cameras whenever people are shooting like this. But it's always funny when I have a Leica shooter who's shooting, and I'll use two hands for this, like this, 
the same people that would criticize a Fuji shooter or a Canon shooter, they want to shoot like this because it's easier. When I have a 21 millimeter or a 28 millimeter and I have glasses, whenever I have a 90 millimeter or a 75 millimeter, what am I supposed to do? Well, you focus, you take the shot, you shut the hell up and you move along like a lot of your predecessors would have. And that's what I believe. Not having live view not only eliminates the need to ever put that and therefore waste battery, but what it does is it makes this more of a seamless, like a simple experience, which so many people love to tout and say that that is the like away. Less is more. No frills means no hassle. And I think this camera right here perfectly embodies that in a way that the M10 and honestly the M11 have completely gone away from. It makes the menu system easier to navigate and it just makes things simpler and it's a quicker response. I know in my heart and in my head every time I grab this camera, it is stills only. There is no want, need, or desire for video because I know what I have and it do what it do. Now let's just mention that sensor again, since that's something we brought up earlier. The sensor is really good. Honestly, I'm very surprised because whenever I owned a Leica Q, I had a really bad issue with banding from the Bayer sensor in low light, high ISO situations. Now notice I'm saying low light, not no light. Because if you have no light, it doesn't matter if you have this, an M11, it doesn't matter if you have a GFX, whatever it is, unless you're shooting a long exposure, you're not gonna be happy with the use of this camera. Now, one thing that I will say about this that I know is a limitation is so many people are quick to tell me, oh, you know, I wouldn't shoot it above ISO 800. I wouldn't shoot it above this, that, and the other. And I get it. You don't want to introduce digital noise. You don't want to introduce any kind of digital grain. Me, I'm someone who believes that that's just a part of the image. The same way that whenever you're shooting super grainy film and it's not a fine grain, if you're shooting any black and white other than T-Max, you're going to have a lot of grain introduced to your image and you like it, it's just there. That's the same way I feel about this. But the surprising thing is I'm able to run this up to 2500 ISO and not have really that many issues whenever it comes to lower light situations. I just make sure the image looks like the image was whenever I was taking it and everything does fine. The color reproduction is great, the highlights and shadows are easy to roll off and there's actually a lot of dynamic range in this camera even though so many people say that you're not getting that much out of it. So make sure you're underexposed by a third of a stop and you're gonna need that because let's be honest, Leica is one of the worst camera companies ever whenever it comes in these embodies to metering. Also 24 megapixels, that has to be an issue, right? You can't do anything with 24 megapixels, can you? Listen, if I had a dollar for every single time I saw Leica M10R on the Reddit photo market with people saying, I just wanna get an M10 or an M10P, I don't need 40 something megapixels, I'd honestly probably have about maybe 28 30 dollars because i see it quite a bit and there's something to be said about that to me 24 megapixels no matter what camera sensor no matter what camera brand is the goldilocks zone for photography this right here is perfect there's enough cropping power to get things done and if you're using this for something like let's say weddings uh, documentary photography or just for shooting street this is going to be more than enough whenever it comes to cropping power resolution print power whatever so i get it I, the M10R, more megapixels, that's sexy. I get it, the M11 tri-resolution sensor. I wish I had a camera with a tri-resolution sensor, but I don't. And whenever you take into account the fact that this camera still produces some of the best images you can get from a Leica camera, you kind of can forgive the fact that it's not 60 megapixels whenever you're not really wanting or needing anything, even at the 24. Now the last thing whenever it comes to this camera that I really enjoy, it's the hugest part of my reasoning for this being the best Leica digital camera ever. And huge is actually the correct word, um, little, little play on words I did there because it's this huge ass battery right here. Listen, I'm not lying. There have been multiple times where I've gone two weeks without charging this battery and I've shot for two, three hour walks or shot an event at least maybe 10 days out of the 14 and I have 20% battery life left on this thing before I pop it on for 45 minutes and now it's back at a full charge. Listen, two week battery life, a thousand shots, 2000 shots, 3000 shots, two week battery life. The thing doesn't stop. 
And that's a huge deal for me. There has never been a time where I've been wary of having this one battery, or there has never been a time where I've had to tell myself, I better take my charger because what if my battery dies? Because I have been on assignment in Seattle, Washington, in Houston, Texas, West Texas, in Dallas, with this camera doing work, and I have never once feared that I was going to run out of battery. Why? Because every time I'm five, six, seven, eight hundred, one thousand shots into a weekend, I look, I turn on my camera, and I press the info button. It has hardly ever, and honestly, I've never seen it below the 20% mark. That is a huge deal. That is fantastic. Hats off to Leica whenever they created this because this thing is a damn beast. Not only am I getting fantastic image quality, that is kind of comparable in many situations to the Leica M10. Not only am I having a build quality that is similar to every Leica, but also was one of the first cameras from the Leica system to have an aluminum top, which now they're releasing with the M11 to make it lighter. This thing is lighter than a regular M10 or an M11 with a brass body. This thing has the amazing shutter sound and the amazing shutter half press to review. There's so many things that are great for this camera, but to add on to that, a battery that I know is going to last me for a couple of weeks if I forget to charge, if I don't wanna charge, if I'm gone on vacation and I don't have a charger, yeah. See, I wish Leica never went away from these larger bodies. To me, there's just something that they lost, the spirit, the soul of this thing, whenever they went ahead and they made it smaller to be able to fit the aesthetic needs of a lot of Leica shooters. You see, one thing that I kind of have an issue with with the Leica community is there's so much talk about gimmicks. There's so much talk about people having fluff for frill or oh, that people just wanting something that looks cool. When there's a lot of people in the Leica community that were really pandering and really just, um, not pandering, but begging to make the body smaller because they want to look more like a film M body. But then when they did that, they ended up getting a heavier body than this Type 262. But they didn't care, why? Because it looked cute. And for me as someone who has shot Fujifilm but has never shot it for the aesthetic and shoots Leica and never shot it for the aesthetic or for the red badge, but because I like this rangefinder experience and because the cost of a Pixie was too goddamn high at the time of me uh, deciding to purchase this, I gotta say, that body is fantastic. I can even grip it with bigger hands better. I hate the M10 body, hate the M11 body. It's a lot harder for me to grip, but this body is light, it's larger, and it fits well in my large hands, which is something that is amazing. Shout out Lonnie George to the large hand gang. He's gonna know exactly what I'm saying. So with all that being said, I hope you guys understand my reasoning and my support for saying that Leica really knocked it out of the park in 2015. They created their best digital M body camera. And ever since then, I think they've just been chasing ghosts. With all that being said, take it light, but take it. Have a good one.